Yes. So first question, can you see my screen? We can see your screen and we can yes. hear you. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So um, a bit about myself. I am Martin Ling style. That's very hard to, uh, to pronounce for some people, but uh, um, I'm in the Microsoft MVP in the development category, Microsoft 365 development. I'm also a Microsoft 365 architect at a uh, fantastic small company in the Netherlands called I4U Business Solutions. Um, well, these are my contact details. You can find my blog. I did a few posts um, a few weeks ago on how to automate SPFX solutions. Uh, and uh, well, this is me showing how that can be done. So let's uh, start. So this is let literally help, um, happening to me all the time. You know, a project has been sold. Uh, SPVIX is part of it or, or any type of application, really. Um, and I start by deploying that manually, you know, the first time. And then I have to change it. So I deploy it again. I, and I postpone creating things like automation and unit tests all the way to the end. And that's really really bad you know and then at the end of the project the customer comes along with a lot of feedback and time gets short and then i don't have really uh, have a lot of time for creating automation anymore and that's just stupid really because automated deployment saves you a lot of time a lot of hassle because really there's a lot of work to do a lot of small manual steps that you can save time and frustration for yourself uh, the more so if you have to deploy to multiple environments. So why not use automation? Uh, this call is about uh, using Azure DevOps pipelines to do so. Uh, and there's a few things you need. You need a repository with an SPFX solution. You need a pipeline written in YAML, which is part of the same repository. Uh, and we need a one or more Entra ID apps to communicate with SharePoint. And of course, uh, my favorite, we always use the CLI for Microsoft 365 to reach several objectives. So let's talk about how that works. The, um, this is what, I, what I've been doing all the time. So uh, when code is pushed to the main branch of the repository, a pipeline will start and it will build the SPFX app. The pipeline will then run a deployment stage and publish uh, the package to the app catalog of, the, of, of SharePoint. It will update. Uh, the app on a site where the app has already been installed. And then the pipeline will pause for a second and wait for you to approve uh, the deployment so that it can then run to production and do the same there. So this is a bit uh, of how uh, what I'm talking about today. Now, there are multiple um, ways to do this in Azure DevOps. And the first way is uh, the classic release pipelines, which you can find in the uh, DevOps portal under the tab releases. And this actually, I've used this a long time. And I've written a blog post on it. It's very nifty. It's multi-stage. It offers all kinds of approvals. Uh, there's only one big but. You cannot create them using YAML. So every time you need to go click, clickety click to set one up, which is uh, very boring. So there's an, a different way these days since a few years, I think so that you can create a built and deployment pipeline just in one pipeline, in one YAML file. And this is actually very nice as well. It also offers multi-stage pipelines. You can have a build, build stage. You can have specific types of deployment jobs as well. Uh, you can do everything in YAML while accepting approvals. So you need to configure that elsewhere. And it's very nice. So um, how can we do this? Well, the first thing, the hardest thing to do first is always authentication. So let's tackle that first. So this pipeline is going to run on a DevOps agent, which is a Microsoft hosted VM somewhere, which is going to be uh, spun up somewhere in the cloud. So how can I take care that that VM will access not one, but even two or three SharePoint tenants and upload my SPFX package there? Well, the answer is, of course, we can use a Entra ID or Azure ID application registration with a self-signed certificate. So we create that. Uh, we need to give it a permission, size.fullcontrol.all, app-only permissions. But I think you can also do this with size.selected so that you can give it less permissions, you know, only on the app catalog and the size that you want. Uh, we need to add our certificate to that Azure ID application. And then we can do all this using just a single PowerShell script. And this is what I use myself. It's a very short script. 
the first part is just creating the uh, certificate, the self-signed certificate. This is, of course, it is on Windows. So if you if you're on on Mac OS or something else, you can probably use Open SSL or something else. But we're just creating a uh, a certificate and exporting it from the store, and then I have a PFX and a SIR file to to use. And the next thing I use is I use the CLI for Microsoft 365 to create an application in the Entra ID tenant of the customer. So in this case, I'm calling it my CI/CD application. I'm assigning it the correct application permissions, as you can see, sites not full control at all. And I'm also connecting my certificate file, the public key, the SIR file to it. I'm giving it a name. I'm saying it needs to be granted consent. And I can just run this one liner if I have enough permissions, of course. Uh, and I do this twice. So in our scenario, uh, we're using a acceptance tenant and a production tenant, which are two separate SharePoint environments, also two separate Entra ID tenants. So I need to create two apps and two certificates and then write down the details. And this is what you will get, just a very simple application with nothing, nothing special, just a uh, container for your permissions in the tenant that you're working with. So, um, so the next step is once we've created the uh, app registration, the certificate, we want these DevOps agent uh, to be able to download the private key of the certificate so that it can use it. Uh, we want it to have access to the tenant ID and the app ID of the applications that we have just created so that it can use this information to connect to SharePoint across the world. Okay, that's what, what we want to do. So to do that, we have to uh, stuff the variables in a Dev in DevOps library, which is a section of your DevOps project, which can contain variables and uh, files. So for our purpose, I'm always creating um, variable groups, and the var variable group can contain multiple variables. As you can see, I have one for acceptance and for production. The variables are the same, but with different values. So as you can see, I've got a, a few basic variables that can be used to connect to SharePoint. I'm using the certificate password, uh, the, the app ID of the app registration, the SharePoint base URL, which is also important, which I'll explain in a moment, and the tenant ID. And the same works for the deployment production variable group. And then we've got a secure file section there we can upload the, uh, the, the private keys of the certificates that we have just created. Um, the acceptance and production both in the same place. Uh, the next part, as we are already in the DevOps portal busy, uh, so we can uh, create our some environments as well. We need to do that at the start. Um, what are environments? It's not like you, you're connecting SharePoint or something here. An environment is really just a container to register your deployment logs. So, um, and an environment is also used for things like permissions and approvals. So, um, it's just really very simple. You click the button new and you click click through and you've got a new environment. And always, what I always do is on the production environment, I register a approval. And so that, you know, otherwise my build pipeline will just build and deploy to acceptance and production at the same time, which is not what we, uh, what we would want. So that's step three, that's creating environments. It's really a very small task, but very uh, important. Uh, the next step is, um, that we are going to write a pipeline definition. Uh, I'm using VS Code to build all my SPFX web parts, and in that VS Code, or in that workspace, in that VS Code folder, in that SPFX folder, I'll just add another file called Azure Pipelines.yaml, and now I can write my pipeline entirely here, which is, if you know how it works, it's easy, but if you don't know how it works, I'll just show you in a minute. Let's check out how that works. So I've got a, you see a VS code open here. And this is actually the solution from the screenshot, as you can see. And this is what, uh, this is really a simple build and deploy pipeline. Uh, it's a bit long, as you can see. And that is because it's doing a couple of things the same, you know, it's deploying to acceptance and it's deploying to production. Um, so we could improve this by using templates, but I've just kept it simple for now. Uh, 
Um, the first thing that you do in a template is just is define, for example, the, the trigger, you know, when is this pipeline going to run? And I want it to run when something is pushed to the main branch of my repository. I'm also, I also want this to run on a uh, Ubuntu image of the Microsoft hosted type. So um, not a Windows machine, but an Ubuntu machine, which is much, fa much faster because we're going to use a lot of NPM commands. And then we're going to create a couple of stages. Uh, the first stage is, of course, well, very clear, it's the build stage, and the build stage can contain a few jobs. Uh, a job can contain a few steps, and then this is really the important part, what you would usually do on your own machine. This, uh, these tasks uh, uh, say, say to the, the, the agent, you know what, uh, please use uh, node 16 for me, and now please install all the uh, packages of the repository that are in the package adjacent file, you know, the entire SharePoint framework uh, package adjacent. And now please execute a GURL bundle and execute a GURL package solution. And this will result in a nice SPFX package in, my, in the folder structure on the build agent. Uh, the last two steps are really important. This is like what you're saying here is please copy that SPPKG and copy it to a, an artifact staging directory. And now please publish that artifact as a named artifact. And if you've done this right, you can, you can download um, you can download the SPPKG after every successful build and just do with, with it whatever you want. So that's the build pipeline. This is usually what we create. Um, after this, the stage ends, and now the new stage starts, and this is the release to acceptance stage. And this stage has a condition. It will only run when build has succeeded. And now, and now it starts to become interesting. You can see I'm referencing a variables group here, which is the variables group I've created before, the deployment acceptance group. And referencing this group here will, will, uh, will help me to use all those variables that I've created there uh, in my pipeline. Um, I'm starting a job, and this is a specific type of job. It's called a deployment job, and the deployment job will target the acceptance environment, just like I've already created. And now there's some boilerplate here about a deployment strategy. There are multiple strategies that, that you can use. I'm just using the most simple version, which is a run once deployment. And there are a couple of build steps in that deployment, and this is this is the, the core part of it. It will first download a secure file. This is the, uh, the, the certificate that we've uploaded to the secure file section, and it will again select nodes. It will install the CLI for Microsoft 365, because that's the tool that we're going to use to deploy this app to the SharePoint tenant. And then uh, the next step is just a script. It's a bash script, and as you can see, it's uh, it's calling the Micro 365 CLI to log into the tenant using a certificate, and it's using the secure file path of the downloaded PFX file. And it's using the certificate password that's coming from my uh, variable group. And it's using the app ID, and it's using the tenant ID. So now it's signed in, uh, and now there's a very little step. It sets the base URL SharePoint. If you don't do this, you need to give the uh, application a bit more permissions because it will the CLI for Microsoft 365 will try to discover your uh, root site for you uh, because it doesn't know. It will try to discover it and it will use the graph to do this. So if you use this, you can you you can just have the one permission that we've added earlier, the SharePoint sites full control all. If you don't use it, you'll have to add an, a specific graph permission to let it access your SharePoint environment and search for your uh, what the actual URL is. Uh, that's a little hack for that I usually do. So the next part is that we can add the SPPKG to the app catalog. It will override the existing app that's already there. It will deploy the app. The GUID that you see here is just the package ID or the project, the package ID that's in the package. What is it? The uh, ID of the uh, solution somewhere in your uh, solution. Um, and then it will upgrade, in my scenario, it will upgrade the app on a specific site that I've named here. And that's it, that's really it. And now it will just continue with the next stage, which is the production stage, and this will do ex exactly the same, but with a different deployment group and with a different certificate. And that's really it. So it's a bit long, um, 
but you can, of course, if you want, you can make it shorter. Just a little hint of how that could work. Uh, I've got a different file here, which is a pipeline that uses templates and it calls a template with parameters. So it calls a release template, but each time with different uh, parameters. This is really nice if you uh, if you are really going to work with this and use that to deploy to multiple environments. Um, okay, so. That's basically it. We've created a pipeline definition. The next step is that we need to create a, a pipeline based on this definition. And this is what you usually do in the DevOps portal. So you go to pipelines, you click new, you have to say where the, the, the file is that you've just created, and you can, ju you can just create it and uh, start it for the first time. You'll have to select existing Azure Pipelines YAML file and select the file that you've just created from your repo. And that's basically it. And then it's time to celebrate because then you'll have a fantastic build pipeline with multiple stages and doing all kinds of things that you have to do yourself, which is super annoying otherwise. Click, 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 go, you know? So uh, awesome thing. I hope you've got, uh, I hope this helps you. Uh, if you want, you can just look up my blogs that I did on the subject. I've got one on the classic release pipelines and one on the modern version. Uh, and I've referenced some uh, documentations as well. So that's it. Back to you, Hugo.